as a documentary filmmaker, um, I'm a very story-driven person. Stories are what interest me. Uh, and I think that we have these extraordinary stories around the Beatles at that moment where they get worldwide success and fame in their trip to New York. And that sounds very grand, but it's actually very intimate. Um, you have these four young men who have dreamed of the United States, and you have <clears throat> these young men and young women who are fans who didn't know what was coming. And um, it, it, it makes for an entertaining film. Well, I mean, the Maisels were, you know, it's re really the definition of the right place and the right time. They were not well-known filmmakers, really. They had made one kind of short documentary. Um, but they uh, obviously were incredible, gifted documentarians who really could capture, they captured so many incredible moments in history. Um, and the the key to their... Uh, uh, success, I think, was their love of people, their love of story and authenticity, and getting to really know who someone is in a way that is, um, you know, just unguarded um, and, unf and unfiltered. And also, they were incredible technicians. You know, they built their own equipment. And they, um, you know, Al Maisel's there's a shot in the film that we just, I could look at it over and over again when he's on the floor of the car with the Beatles and he's filming the Beatles, he's filming outside, the car is moving, there's horses. It's, but it, it, the way that he does this shot is extraordinary. And, and it's even in modern terms of 2024, it's just incredibly impressive and something that is not something you see with any cinematographer. He was a very gifted artist they they called what they their style of filmmaking direct cinema and um, I think in a way that 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 says it that um, and they weren't alone there were many pioneers Pennebaker Robert Drew um, they saw what they were seeing in the documentary world they felt was contrived or academic or informational and they wanted something direct um, intimate emotional a real story, the way stories are told. Um, and that, I think it's a, a, it's more than a stroke of luck. It's, it's just extraordinary that they were allowed to, to, to film the Beatles with such intimacy. Well, it's seeing it restored and it's hearing it restored too, because, um, you know, the, the teams, Peter Jackson's company, Park Road Productions is, the picture restoration side, they had developed this incredible technology on his previous documentaries, starting with They Shall Not Grow Old, and then, of course, moving to Get Back. And then his company, Wingnut, which created this MAL software, this technology to take mono soundtracks and de-mix them and, and take the disparate elements and sources out and then allow those to be remixed. Um, you know, when we were first putting this together, when David had early cuts, um, I honestly was a little bit nervous because the sound <laughs> of the performances, the music, I was kind of like, is it gonna sound like this? And then when we started getting the work, we started getting the restored tracks, and it was like, I mean, every hesitation, every, every, concern was evaporated and I, my mind was blown you almost you jump out of your seat because you feel you're there and you're hearing the incredible performance that this band you know put out into the world and so it's a it's a technical process but it results in an emotional reaction i mean this is the beginning you know beatlemania had been going on for just a couple of months and when they arrived to New York, it, it, it became this, uh, uh, this worldwide phenomena. Um, but what I hope they take from it is the joy that the Beatles had making music and the joy that the fans had in listening to the music. 